We are very familiar with the fact that puppies grew up to be dogs, that heavy objects fall, and that like charges repel. Most of us are familiar with even more universal patterns, or laws of nature. For instance, that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, or that energy is conserved in every physical interaction. These things have become so familiar to us that we often treat them as obvious and self-evident. Which makes Aquinas' claim, present in the fifth way and elsewhere, that the regularity of natural activity demands some intelligent being sound antiquated and strange. Ultimately, though, this intuition of Aquinas does not really reveal his own naivete about the natural order. More properly, it reveals something of our own blindness, of how much we take the natural scientific order for granted. For Aquinas, the only alternative to an intelligent ordering to the world would be for all natural activity to come about by chance. This might seem plausible to modern ears when we hear about how much chance and chaos there seems to be in the natural world. But as we have discussed in other Aquinas 101 videos, while there are elements of randomness in nature, those elements are always built on more fundamental principles of order. For example, while the particular distribution of galaxies, stars, and planets in our universe is arguably random, that randomness only played out in the context of very constrained patterns of gravitational, chemical, and nuclear interactions. No physical events are purely random. While they may exhibit randomness at one level, it is always built upon and depends upon an order at another deeper level. If chance were the ultimate cause of all natural phenomena, then there would be no regularity at all. Heavy things would sometimes fall and sometimes fly off into space. Salt would sometimes dissolve and sometimes explode when encountering water. Light charges would sometimes attract and sometimes repel. In fact, even those sentences would not make sense in a truly random world, because we cannot even begin to talk about something being heavy or being salt or being charged unless there is some consistent order to its activity at some level. Even the very categorization of natural things that is the precursor to doing any science at all cannot be rooted in pure chance and requires an intelligence and intelligibility to explain it, according to Aquinas. But are these the only options, chance and intelligence? Couldn't we argue for some middle ground? Couldn't we just say that nature acts the way it does because it is constrained by various laws of nature? Newton's laws, conservation of momentum and energy, the laws of thermodynamics, etc. It is clear that, to the best of our knowledge, the world obeys these fundamental constraints and patterns. Our ability to recognize and categorize them has been hugely productive in the development of the sciences, especially of physics. In physics, the mathematical tools by which we are able to describe so many phenomena have built up an instinct for finding more and more complicated and fundamental order in the world. This instinct is the driving force behind so much cutting-edge research. That said, this confidence in the order of nature, the presumption that nature is the sort of thing that can be arranged in orderly, often mathematical ways, can cloud the fact that discovering what the natural order is does not explain why the order is there at all. While we talk about the laws of nature often, we don't often stop to think about what these laws are supposed to be. I don't think anyone would argue that these laws are some sort of physical agent present pushing things around in the world, but perhaps you might say they are the patterns and mathematical rules that somehow govern physical interactions. At this point, then, we're talking about some non-material but intelligible reality that either actually constrains the physical order or at least describes the built-in constraints that we find there. The step from here to Aquinas' intelligent being directing things to their ends that we find in the fifth way is really not that far. Over the centuries, scientists and philosophers have discussed the laws of nature in a huge variety of ways, some explicitly open to God and some actively seeking to exclude Him. Ultimately, though, the intelligibility of the natural order and its activity is not self-evident or self-explanatory. While Aquinas' invocation of an intelligence to explain this order might strike some as strange, I would argue that this is because we tend to focus on what the laws of nature are rather than why there should be laws of nature at all. Much more could and should be said about how those of us who take Aquinas' philosophy of nature seriously should understand laws of nature and God's role in ordering the physical world. For now, I would say that in the sciences, we are discovering various natures of 
physical and biological substances, and their real causality on one another. The more universal laws, like conservation of energy and momentum, or the laws of thermodynamics, describe particular patterns of action and reaction that are consistent across all physical substances. While Aquinas may only have had a small glimpse at the complex beauty of the natural order revealed by modern science, those advances have not undermined his intuition that some intelligence must be directing that natural order. Instead, if we really reflect on it, they make that intuition and the need for an intelligent creator even more powerful. For readings, podcasts, and more videos like this, go to Aquinas101.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for one of our free video courses on Aquinas. And don't forget to like and share with your friends, because it matters what you think.